so first you gotta introduce yourself. First of all, give me first last name and then tell me where you from. Okay. My name is Christopher Lloyd, right? Christopher Charles Lloyd the first to be specific. I am from Rework Cycle 14, right? And uh, I, we I, I, I want, before the real, I want like where you from, like what city, state, <laughs> neighborhood, like where you from, from? All right. Where am I from? I am from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, now they call it Bronzeville. When I came through there in the 70s and the 80s, it was the low end. It was Dodge City. Uh, the 16-story high-rise buildings were still up. The low-rise Ida B. Wells projects were still up. I went to Holy Angels, and I had to walk to school from 4122 Calumet to 506 East Oakwood Boulevard. Yeah. So. You know, brother was fleet of foot. I learned what BOS meant before I learned what sesquipedalian meant. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. And so like, man, you like, oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we want to know where you're from, right? Cause it's like, I feel like that means something, right? I feel like with that, you know, it came a certain culture that you like grew up on that like, you know, I guess talk about the culture. Like, you know, you went to you went to Chicago public schools or you went to private school? No, actually, my parents um, sacrificed. I, I had the opportunity to attend private school. Okay, right. uh, I went to Holy Angels. Then I went to Mount Carmel uh, through uh, the LINK program. So I'm a LINK I'm a limited alumni class 89. But I think the thing about the culture was that's important is that um, the L. Rook and Grand Major Temple was right down the street from Holy Angels on Jackson Boulevard. So basically um, I have been recruited, attempted to recruit because they came and brought you the application uh, back in those days. Uh, and, you know, politely refused, but I used to party at the fort. Uh, it was one of the safest places I've ever been in my life to party. There was never a fight or promotion or anything. $2 to get in, uh, had a great time. Uh, never no drugs, or alcohol, anything like that. But, you know, it was the, the mystique of it. But I think the flip side of that is on the other side of the street, when I got back to the Calumet side, it was definitely a little different. You know, that's when I was victim of a strong arm robbery, walking home from one of the neighborhood stores. You know, it was just, it was rough. You know, it was rough. And my parents sacrificed a lot. Uh, but there were still barriers for me to move forward. Uh, yeah. Even though I, I went to college, I left college early because I got married. And so that created some, you know, some professional challenges for me. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say like, man, you say professional challenges, I'm assuming like opportunities, like, like, what was that like? You know, like, you know, like, what was it like? How'd you feel? What was it like? Well, I was in the, res I was in the Army Reserve. So my, what would have been my freshman year of college, I decided to take uh, basic training AIT back to back. So I was a tactical computer systems repairman. They sold me on the whole electronics computing thing. You know, I had 3,000 hours of training. I'm thinking, hey, I'm going to get out here. I'm going to find a good paying job or whatever. No, that's not what happened. What I did was I was uh, a 25-year-old father. I was working security. And I ended up in, uh, in law enforcement, working for the Housing Authority Police. I did that for about five years until they disbanded, you know, yeah. So and it, so, and then, and then like you just like man, just went from looking for job to job. Like, cause I feel that's like that's it. Yeah. Because once you develop those kind of skill sets, it becomes very difficult for you in the workplace. Uh, that's why programs like Rework become awesome. Because in Rework, I learned how to take all those skills. Like, I'm not afraid to talk to people. So I also know how to pay attention to detail. I know how to listen. I know how to write reports. So. Rework was a program that helped me understand that, you know, hey, sales may be a good segue for you and it can get you to that, you know, financial opportunity that you're looking for that you need. Hey, to live in a big city like Chicago, you need to be really as close to six figures as you can, you know, and that's just the truth. You know, if you really want to enjoy what the city has to offer, it's a great city. We got Michelin star restaurants. But, you know, if you go in there and the, and, the, and the shrimp toast is 17, you know, and that's just the appetizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you got to have some, you got to have bread, especially if you're going to have a good time, 100%, man. So then you like, you mentioned rework, right? So then like, like talk about like, you know, so growth is painful, man. But grow people like, man, you want to grow, it's like, man, you got to get up and do something to, to grow. Like, you know, what was probably, I say, one of the biggest things that, you know, for you, growth like pain points of growth when you got to rework like what 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 was like the biggest like aha moment 
if any, you know, they don't lie to me. If you're like, oh, yeah, I, nothing. But like, what was the growth mindset, right? I didn't realize that what I had been taught to do in school was to seek out to be comfortable. Hey, get a good education, get some good skills, get a good job. But what they don't tell you about that is you're going to spend most of your adult life working and there's really no challenge. So after being in law enforcement and security, there was always a challenge to it. There was always work was never the same every day. And there was kind of a, a, a fun to it. You know, even though it was dangerous, it, there was still a challenge there that could not get you up the next day. So what I found in addressing growth mindset is one of the rework values. That's the one I, I latched on to the most. And that's where I've been growing. So actually, as of now, I'm actually with Go Health. Uh, they revamped their whole program and I work for them. I'm on pace to become a varsity agent. Uh, and for varsity agent, I need to be at a 0.31 conversion rate or better. I'm at about a 0.28 right now. So I'm looking to become a varsity agent. And what it does is it was able to merge for me by being in a program like we were to help me change my mindset, to grow, to say, well, hey, you know what? Even though this door closed, there's another door that can open and it can be an extremely lucrative door. So hitting varsity agent status, what that'll put me on track to do is actually make $100,000 in a year for the first time in my life. And it'll be my first year working with them that I, I'm on track to do that. Man, get some of that avocado toast, boy. That avocado <laughs> toast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Good stuff, man. So, man, you're you're OG, right? I mean, you got you got connections. <laughs> you connected on like on a couple of fronts. Like, you got people that's looking up to you, man. You got people that I'm pretty sure that's that you know may be still around from you know when 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 you went to school, right? And like, man, circumstances are circumstances and they affect all of us. Uh, what would you what would you say to those? Like, what would you say one to like a, a audience that's, you know, in your your age range, right? Where it's just like you know, they may be used to doing the same thing over and over again. Like you said, like I was used to this one skill set. And like, you know, I feel like they, you know, I get I'll be meeting people that stuck, right? They're stuck and they're like, I don't right. want to jump. And I hate my current job. And like, I ain't really getting paid that much. I'm getting paid like 45, 25, that, between 25 and 45. But like, I ain't, I don't think I could do nothing else. All right. Right. So what would you say to that person? And then like, second question, what would you say to the younger generation? Right. Where it's just like, to your point of like, you've been conditioned to like, you go to school and then like go to work. And it's just like, you think it's supposed to happen. Right. Right. So one thing is that you have to challenge yourself, right? One of the things that is very important about any of this is I think that you have to have a conversation with yourself. You have to get in the mirror and you have to really ask yourself, do you want that next thing? Because what happened with rework was that, like the old saying is, is that when the student is ready, then the master will appear. And so that's what rework was in my life. I had to get my head together where I was willing to embrace change, willing to embrace because if I wanted, because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. And I just had a conversation with a friend of mine uh, the other day and he's retired from CTA 31 years. So I was like, I was like, well, what's next? I mean, this guy's still relatively young, you know, what's next? He was like, well, the first year I'm just gonna take off or whatever. So I suggested, I said, hey, you know, you thought about a career change. Have you thought about what, you know, what are you going to do? I said, you're in your early 50s. You're still a young man. You know, like you still got a lot of life left in you and a lot of experience to share. And that's what I found at, with Go Health is that because I'm on a team and we're on a team with different people, that it allows me to kind of be inspirational to even the younger members of my team. Because they're looking at me and they're saying, well, hey, you know, Chris, you're, you're, you're a little bit older than I am. And, you know, here you are. And this is your first year. Like, what did you do? I said, well, this is what you do, is that you ask yourself, is achieving your goal more important than you being afraid to step out? I said, so what Rework does is it gives you the confidence, builds up your own faith in yourself. Because, you know, I don't trust me. I trusted the process I was taught at Rework. You know, when I walked through the door the first Saturday, 
you know, we had a sales contest, right? We, we found out that, hey, the, the top dog gets the most money. And so what that did was, was that, hey, you know, if you can make $100,000 a year, it's within your grasp. You know, and it and these are skills that you probably already have because in Chicago, the word we use always is finesse. You know, and if you out here in the streets finessing, you know, you can get out here and get this work, you know, and you can learn how to take your finesse to the corporate world. And now you don't have to be looking over your shoulder for them people, you know, you can be one of the beautiful people walking around. In the, in, you know, in the River North area to your beautiful apartment, because now you've put in that work, you listened, you were able to submit to a process and trust the process and learn that, hey, cold calling is rough, but prepare yourself. You might have to make 25 cold calls before you get that first connection. But if you say, hey, this is Chris, I'm calling from Go Health, you know, and did I catch you at a bad time? You know, did I catch you at a bad time? Oh, no, you didn't catch me at a bad time. I got a couple of minutes. Listen, great to hear that you got a couple of minutes. I don't want to waste your time. Hey, when was the last time you went to the dentist? And when you're talking to seniors, that's a fantastic question, right? So they're like, well, man, I have been at a dentist in three or four years. I said, so would you, be willing to, would you be willing to talk to me for a few more minutes so I can help you find a way to get you to the dentist? If I can get you a new plan, get you qualified for something that will help you get to the dentist and maybe save you some money, would that be something of interest to you? Yes, that would be interesting to me, young man. Can you help me? And it was that simple. It was that simple. Having the confidence to learn the process, learn what the flow is, learn how to walk people through what is what's in it for them. Yeah, I'm going to benefit. I am going to benefit financially. Yes. But it is so fantastic for me to be able to connect seniors with benefits that they did not. People have been in the dentist in 10 years. Getting people who live in rural areas rides to the doctor so they don't have to burden relatives. And I'm on track to make $100,000 this year. That's it. That's it, man. Hey, man, you, you, I'm going to tell you the easiest. You, I'll, so usually I got this top track and I got to land this plane somewhere. And I'm like, Look, it's like you said, so on the last uh, couple of interviews I've done, like I end with like, all right, give me something. Give me a, give me an air quote where I could use as like the, the commercial when I, when I when I start broadcasting these and end it with like get this work and you just you fired it up man you fired it up I'm like yes sir this dude is this man organic I appreciate it man I appreciate you man appreciate yes you. sir that that's that's it man that's a take dude you got yeah take care.